Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope that you enjoyed Cecilia in my recent conversation that we had earlier this week. Uh, we covered a lot of interesting things, and in case you missed it, I, I suggest checking out the, our convo and also um, checking out Cecilia's new YouTube channel as well as her website. Um, she'll have more stuff on her website as she goes along, but she already has stuff on there. And she's already got a couple videos out. Uh, really great to have Cecilia um, doing car vids because she's a very unique voice, as most of you know who have listened to her before when it comes to the, these spiritual and manifesting ideas, self-improvement, habit-building ideas. Um, so yeah, definitely check out her channel if you have not. Uh, other announcement I want to make is that I'm going to be offering a group coaching session a group coaching session next Wednesday, July 5th at 5 p.m. Eastern. Next Wednesday, July 5th at 5 p.m. Eastern. This is going to be a paid private group session, meaning that it's not going to be posted on YouTube. And that enables people to be more uh, open and forthright in session. The cost is $50 US if you would like to join us. So if you would like to join us, you can email me at info at radicalcounselor.com. Info at radicalcounselor.com. On to today's topic. Cecilia and I were talking about how often it's helpful to notice these manifesting ideas and principles, concepts, uh, how they affected your life and how they took place in your life before you ever consciously knew about them, before you ever read about them or had heard of people like Neville or, you know, books like The Secret or, you know, Abraham Hicks or anything like that. Like how these general fundamental fundamental ideas probably like we're, we're working in your life in a way that you can recognize if you go back and think about it, you know, and we were, t we were giving examples of like health and, you know, d different ways where you manifest better health and, you know, manifest different things in your life without even knowing you're doing it in this way that someone like Neville teaches or Joseph Murphy teaches or, or whoever teaches, right? It's a very natural thing. In my opinion, it's part of how we're built as humans, this intrinsic um, part of our physiology, of our, our mind-body relationship, of just how we're made up to survive, of our survival mechanism, you know? Um, and I thought I would expand upon that a little bit today uh, in a very personal yet impersonal way. Um related to what we've been discussing recently, particularly in regards to like, you know, Joel Goldsmith and this idea of like the absolute method and resting in God, you know, as opposed to trying to, you know, constantly manifest certain things, specific things in your life, instead just kind of resting in God and have having that be essentially your quote unquote manifesting practice. This is something that I basically have done since I was a teenager, you know, probably, you know, 15, if not 20 years before I ever really got into these ideas, I was still doing this, except I was doing it not as consciously as I, as I now attempt to do. Um, from a very young age, I was interested in, uh, spiritual ideas. One reason perhaps being that I was raised essentially agnostically, never went to church, never went to temple or, you know, anything like that, except for like, you know, some friends, bar mitzvahs or whatever. But, you know, my family never went to any religious services, never really talked about God. Um, 
not to say that my parents weren't spiritual in any ways, particularly my father was very into, into yoga and uh, Eastern spirituality. He actually had, I think I've mentioned this before in passing, he had um, the Whitner Binner translation of the Tao Te Ching, the way of life. Um, that was just on our bookshelf. And that that's still the way of life. Um, th that Whitner Binner translation of the Tao Te Ching is, is by far my favorite translation of that book and one of my all-time favorite books. So, like, I was reading stuff like that at a pretty young age, you know, at, like, 13 years old or something like that. And right away, intuitively, it just kind of connected that, like, if you recognize whatever you want to call it, God, presence, the universe, the unity of all things, if you recognize that, everything else kind of lines up in your life. Like, things tend to work out much better if you just recognize God. I'll say God, for lack of a better word. Um, and then, you know, I had some experiences in my teenage years, you know, where I was like seeking, 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 right? Seeking God or whatever you want to call about it, call it, um, which kind of confirmed that for me, particularly that experience I had that I wrote about in the joy of not thinking about, you know, basically like having a, <laughs> like a, a breakdown on, on, on a beach. Um, and then the realization, I guess you could say of like, I don't know, I, the, the realization of, of the realization, you know, the realization of God, you could say, where it was like, oh yeah, God is everything, God is everywhere, and there's nothing you have to do, everything's fine, right? So, that's always kind of been my, since that point, for sure, that's always kind of been my, like, my guiding force, my, my, survival mechanism in action where like I haven't necessarily planned out my life um, or thought that far in the future a lot of the time and I've just kind of rested in God and always tried to go back to that like connection feeling unity feeling flow with this greater thing and um, that's just kind of how I've lived my life but since I got into these principles, I realized that I could probably do that a lot more than I did when I was younger, you know, where I was like more, um, you know, you just don't have as many life experiences, you know? So I was concerned about like, you know, what am I going to do for a job? For instance, you know, like, how am I going to work? Like, you know, how am I going to make money? Right. Um, and like, do I have to do, you know, how can I fit in, right? And then the older I've gotten, the more I'm like, well, maybe, you know, I don't have to fit in. I can just rest in God and it will work out in some way. And so that's an interesting um, part of, you know, my life experiences and proce process, the process of doing that for me. And it's it's been really interesting, like the last five five years or so, you know, having kids, having children, like that's another thing. It's like, you know, how much can you just let go and let God, right? And the answer is almost always more than you think. When you recognize that, right now, that you are not separate from this, the divine, you know, if you recognize that, you can recognize this throughout your day. This is like what Goldsmith talks about. You recognize that and uh, you realize you don't have to make as many decisions, perhaps, as you think you have to make. It's not to say you won't have to make any decisions. You will. But You know, rest ye weary travelers is what it comes down to. You know, you can rest in God in that way. You can have the trustful passivity that H. M. Lee Cady talks about more than um, many of us, certainly myself, allow ourselves to have. 
And it's very difficult for me, like when my children are screaming or, you know, they're in pain or something's going on to be like, I'm going to rest in God. But here we are resting in God and we can. We can work on letting go in that way and resting in what we always are, whether we like it or not. And when we like it, when we rest in it instead of fight against it, our external life also tends to get better. That's not the point. The point is this right now. And this is something we can, you know, become more intimate and recognize more fully over and over again. It's a huge relief.